Behind Lacrosse, brought to you by Toyota, moving forward, and hosted by U.S. Lacrosse, one for all. Welcome to Behind Lacrosse, the fastest sport on two feet covered by the fastest show on TV, where we'll take you on a behind-the-scenes look at the sport of lacrosse. Hey, everyone. I'm Shan Stanwick birch former lacrosse player at Georgetown University and four-time All-American. Lacrosse is not just the fastest sport on two feet, but the fastest growing sport in the United States. The number of high school lacrosse teams has increased by 174% over the past decade, and no other sport has grown faster than lacrosse at the NCAA level. Nobody knows more about the growth of lacrosse than U.S. Lacrosse, the game's national governing body, based here in Baltimore, Maryland, on the campus of Johns Hopkins University. Johns Hopkins midfielder Kyle Harrison went to the Friends School of Baltimore, just a stone's throw away from Homewood Field. The prized local recruit came to Hopkins with a lot of fanfare and never disappointed in his four years as a Blue Jay. He was a three-time All-American, two-time National Midfielder of the Year, and National Player of the Year. He was one of the most decorated players to play at Homewood. In the spring of 2005, he rounded out his impressive resume with a national championship. I don't know, it, it's definitely different from the normal Baltimore story. Um, clearly my dad played, uh, just kind of threw me a stick along with the basketball and a football and a tennis ball and, and, and kind of every sport. You know, I guess the, the first time I got into it was just me and my dad in the backyard playing everything and just happened to pick up the lacrosse stick and gave it a shot. I'm a pretty naive kid and I was really just enjoying myself playing all three sports. You know, I, I played soccer, you know, during, during the fall. And at the same time, I was playing indoor lacrosse and just bouncing around and, and playing basketball down in the city and kind of just really enjoying it. And I guess junior year, everything got pretty serious and people were starting to say, you got to pick one, you know, you got to figure out what you want to do. And I guess I just looked at it as, you know, basketball is a pretty good player, but I felt like I could go to a Division One school and be a, uh, just be like an average point guard. You know, I'm not tall. I mean, clearly, I'm not strong. So pretty, pretty average point guard. And uh, soccer, I loved. And, and to this day, I love it and miss it every day, you know. Um, it's probably probably my second sport uh, in terms of you know my talent wise, and uh, I just figured you know, I didn't really want to play soccer in college. Kind of weird, and uh, lacrosse. Clearly, my my dad and uh, his whole story. I feel like that'd be a good way to kind of uh, let him kind of relive one of his dreams. I know he really wanted to go to Hopkins, and uh, I don't know. I felt like I had a pretty good chance to be good at it. You know, my dad and and those players at Morgan dealt with you know, racial problems and, and people not really treating them well because they were really a bunch of football players trying to play a different sport. And so, uh, you know, they, they dealt with their own problems. And, and clearly, times have changed in terms of, you know, people shouting out racial slurs at you or treating you differently because you're, you're black or things like that. We don't, you know, thank God, we don't really experience that that much anymore. Everyone kind of puts this weird spin on it that, like, we're the trailblazers and we're, like, leading this big charge. You know, we don't look at it like that. You know, we're just lacrosse. We do. We are black, but we are lacrosse players. You know, we don't, we don't feel like we're leading the charge or anything like that. You know. The biggest influence in my life by far is my mother. She's taught me everything. She's stood by me through everything. I, I've learned everything about life, you know, through her. And uh, but as far as sports go, Michael Jordan clearly um, it's all over my walls. He's all over everything. Um, it's just somebody I've always looked up to. Somebody I've wanted to be. Somebody I've wanted to be as competitive as he is. It's everything about him. Muhammad Ali. He's pretty cocky, and I, I love that. It's very opposite of me, but uh, I, I loved how cocky he was and, and how he could always back it up. My job's a prolaxer. Yeah, you know, it's it's cool. You know that. 
to be able to go around and speak to kids and, and have some type of influence on their life, it's, it's fun. And I got little stories from here and there about running into different kids. After practice, I would go to uh, McDonald's and get a McFlurry, do my whole routine by myself, go back home. And uh, so I go to McDonald's one day, and I had on my Hopkins across a little polo, you know. And uh, I get there, he says, oh, you played Hopkins? I said, yeah, I played Hopkins. He's like, oh, that kid, uh, number 18's pretty good. I was like, yeah, it's me. He's, and he like eyed me up, like looked down, kind of looked up, and he was like, mm, I thought you'd be a little bigger. I was like, uh, no, bud, this is it. And he was like, wow, if you can play, I can definitely play. So I take it all back to basketball. You know, my whole split dodge, whatever you want to call it, shake, is exactly how I used to shake in basketball, exact same move. My advice to kids would just be play as much as possible with, uh, you know, basketball. You know, there's a lot of correlation between the two sports there. Uh, play a little bit of football, clearly, and, and just have fun. Kids, stop taking lacrosse so seriously. Hopkins was, was great for me, you know, for, for Coach Petro to be as hard on me as he was and really forced me to learn the game and, and kind of realize that you're not just going to be able to, to run around and freelance for the rest of your life playing lacrosse. You're going to have to learn the game at some point. I had to learn how to work, get me to be the player that they all saw that I could be that I just didn't know existed. My junior year, we lost to Syracuse in the uh, semifinals. We just played terribly. I was, I was embarrassed. I was mad at myself because I felt like I played terribly. I've, I've just never, I've never felt like that before. And so I, right after the game, literally, I took off for three weeks, went to uh, Ocean City, a little condo there, and literally sat in the condo for maybe mm, like 10 hours a day, just literally depressed for three weeks straight. And uh, at the end of three weeks, I wrote my whole team an email basically apologizing for everything that happened. It was, it was just, it was good for me to finally be able to step up and kind of get all that off my chest and, and kind of let everybody know that I, like I, I felt like that was pretty much my fault. You know, I didn't face off well. I definitely didn't shoot very well. But I think everything started when that email was sent out and everybody could kind of <sighs> just kind of see that I was ready to step up. You know, I think Coach T and I are very close here at Hopkins, Coach Tierney, and he was, he told me, you know, recently that's when finally, he was like, all right, Pat's finally here. And that's what they've been trying to get out of me for, I guess, two years now. And they're waiting for it my sophomore year, but it really didn't happen much. But uh, that, that's really when it all started. I finally stepped up as a leader. I'm trying to get in the city. I'm trying to show kids that they can play this game. I'm trying to just, you know, keep promoting the sport, you know, and, and is it to black kids? Yeah, the fact of the matter is I'm a black kid. And so, uh, and those are the kids I want to get involved. Those are the kids I want to help. I, I feel like the game needs to go back to, you know, the midfielders did everything. They were on the wings of face-offs. They could face off. They would play defense. They would play offense. They could play the transition game. They can do everything on the field. And uh, I, ju I just hope I'm remembered as one of the guys that can do that. I can't even tell you my stats. I'm not interested in that. And I never have been. And uh, I mean, the, the personal accolades, yeah, it's great. Like the tour, that was pretty cool to uh, be able to be on that short list of people and, and get that award and be able to, to stand up there and thank all the people that have uh, helped me out through the way. But uh, no, that's not, that's not why I came to college. It's not why I play. I play to, to win games with my buddies and, and kind of hang out and have fun. And uh, to win the national championship senior year was pretty cool. He's a pretty lazy kid that uh, doesn't take lacrosse too seriously, but he, he, he'll work, you know, he'll work at it and, and have really had a great experience in it. And, uh, you know, I, I guess I've just been so fortunate, you know, with, with the people I've met that, uh, that, that have kind of led me to this, this, uh, this point I'm at now, you know. But I would not be here if it was not for, you know, Coach Petro, Coach Tierney, Coach Dwan, my dad, my mom kind of lead me in that direction just because I am such not not necessarily not motivated but I'm just so content with just whatever whatever comes my way okay I'll do this whatever you know that's how I always was when I was younger so I guess who was Kyle Harris just that kid that was put in a great situation then uh, he's made the most of it U.S. Lacrosse one for all Everyone talks about how long their truck will last. When we build a truck, we think way down the road. Toyota Tundra has been factory tested to survive years of abuse. That's why day in, day out, 
to the worst of the elements, and all the rigors of time, nothing stops a tundra. Toyota, moving forward. Special financing and lease options available now. U.S. Lacrosse, one for all. Behind the Game, brought to you by Toyota, moving forward. More than 5,000 fans came out to the Carrier Dome to root on fifth-ranked Syracuse as the Orange hosted 13th-ranked Army. New Army head coach Joe Alberici likes what he sees from his squad up two to nothing. The Orangemen answered the bell as they reeled off four consecutive goals in bunches of two. Six minutes later, freshman Dan Hardy and senior Greg Rommel scored their goals within 34 seconds, and that gave Syracuse a 4-2 to two lead after one quarter. In the second quarter, Army All-American John Walker created some space with this spin move to fire a shot past Orange goalie Pete Policini. With that goal, Army climbs within one, four to three. But that lead would go back to two in a jiffy as Joe Yavoli scores his first goal in a Syracuse uniform. The seesaw contest continued as Army tied the game with back-to-back -back goals from Hunter Wakeland and Walker. For Wakeland, it was his first career goal as he scored on an extra man opportunity. Walker's second goal of the game came with less than four minutes to go before halftime. Army had the game tied up, but Syracuse takes the lead right back. Greg Rommel fires a shot past Army goalie Adam Fullerton, and the Orange led 6-5 at the break. The third quarter opens with yet another Army goal, this time from sophomore Matt Scheel. The Black Knights scored the first goal of every quarter. Minutes later, though, the Orange regained the lead off the stick of Nathan Kenny. 14 seconds later, the Orange strike again. This time John Gallagher scores this unassisted goal. But the Black Knights hung tough. They cut the lead to one again as Walker fed fellow senior Mike Obringer for the goal. Army's now down just 8-7 to seven as the quarter draws to a close. It's the beginning of the final quarter, so why not start with an Army goal? Right on cue as Obringer scored his second of the game just 37 seconds into the fourth. The teams continued to trade goals. Syracuse went up 9-8 to eight on Yavoli's second score. Then Army's John Walker found the net again, completing the hat trick and tying the game for the fifth time. The Orange would regain the lead once and for all on a Brett Bucktooth goal with 10-20 left in the game. Bucktooth tacked on two more for Hughes as they closed out a 14-10 win over Army. So we check the final numbers. Syracuse first and fourth quarters proved to be the difference. Army's John Walker tallied seven points. But it wasn't enough as Army has now dropped 11 straight games to Syracuse, dating back to 1983 when the Knights took down the Orange 9-6. Redshirt freshman Pete Colaccini had a solid day in goal for the Orange in his first collegiate outing, racking up nine saves. And former University of Virginia standout Joe Yavoli had a great debut for Syracuse. The transfer scored two goals and assisted on two others in the win. To women's lacrosse we go, a classic ACC showdown between Virginia and Maryland in College Park. The ninth-ranked Cavaliers struck first. Freshman Whitaker Hagerman gets fouled and converts this 8-meter shot. 1-0 Wahoos. Hagerman gets involved again a minute and a half later, scoring her second goal of the night. She finished with four in the game. The fourth-ranked Terrapins answer back with two goals of their own. Senior midfielder Delia Cox fired in the first one, followed by Casey Mager's goal. She deposited off the assist from Christy Polizzi, and we are knotted at two apiece. After the team's traded goals three times, the Cavs scored again. Freshman Blair Weymouth getting her second goal of the contest. As we head to the break, it's UVA up 7-5. The second half began much like the first. UVA scores the first three goals to complete a 5-0 run, staking the Cavs to a 10-5 advantage. 
Senior Tyler Leachman scores UVA's 10th goal with 16.52 left in the game. Maryland tries to chip away at the Virginia lead. This Brooke Richards unassisted goal pulled the Terps to within four, but that would be as close as they could get. Virginia's Blair Weymouth scores her game-high fifth goal to seal the victory for the Cavaliers. Virginia pulls off the 14-9 upset on the road. Cox had a hat trick in the loss for the Terrapins. Virginia, by the way, swept last year's two meetings against Maryland. Behind the Game, brought to you by Toyota, moving forward. Growing up in the Midwest, Lou Braun knew one thing or another about big-time football battles. The Ohio native and son of a former Buckeye football player knew that when OSU faced off against Michigan on the gridiron, it was time to rumble. For four years at Johns Hopkins, Lou did some rumbling of his own as one of the Blue Jays face-off specialists. He breaks down his technique in our Behind the Move breakdown. As the sport of lacrosse has progressed, the speed has been rapidly changing. And one of the most important aspects of the sport, the face-off, is changing as well. Here's a move that whether you're at the high school, middle school, or college level is gonna help you to get that ball down from the ground up into the offensive sticks where it needs to be. It's called the plunger, and one of the most important parts is getting your right hand up as close to the head of the stick as it can. Your left hand, when the whistle is blown, actually should come forward and up, pinching over this ball so you can pop it up, catch it off the ground, down to your offense, so they can put it in the back of the net. Coming up, a lacrosse team manager makes it on the big screen thanks to his big heart. talks about how long their truck will last. When we build a truck, we think way down the road. Toyota Tundra has been factory tested to survive years of abuse. That's why day in, day out, to the worst of the elements, and all the rigors of time, nothing stops a Tundra. Toyota, moving forward. Special financing and lease options available now. We don't have any highlight footage of this next behind the cross friend. Instead, we have a trailer of his film. He's not an all-American attackman or a legendary coach, but rather a dedicated team manager from Middlebury College. Peter Cohn is as unique as a sport of lacrosse. Documentary movie producer David Gaines saw Peter as more than the person that filled up water bottles and found missing balls. He saw a story about the heart and will of a man who came of age later in life. coaches and a lot of good programs and they're places that have great facilities but there's only one Pete Cone. Come out fine, come out fast. You can get ahead early if you can. Come out fast and keep it going. But if we start out very well, it's going to be a great help. Don't be nervous or tight. Have a great time out there and bring home the bacon guys. <laughs> Trying to beat Springfield. I am a field manager for Middlebury College in Vermont. I've worked on a number of different sports. I have a cross within my major sport. I have to get everything out to the field. The balls, the water, the cows, all my responsibility. Thank you. Somebody new to the program will come along and they'll ask with some tact 
does Pete have a, a handicap? What are Pete's special needs? And you sort of take a step back and think about it and you've forgotten all about it. It's not been something that's important to my relationship with him or his relationship with the team. Thank you very much. Give us your heart, man. Give us your heart. Pete, you got anything for us? Uh, don't take this team for granted. The minute you take somebody for granted, that's when you're going to have a very difficult day. Play with full dedication, rise up, and have the cream to come out on the top. Play hard and well. Have a great day today, and bring home the bacon. Hey, Pete, what time is it? It's time to beat Nazareth. In 1988, we designated a rookie on the team to make sure that after the practice or the game, that Pete was with somebody who, who was helpful. It was Pete's companion. And ever since that time, there has been a Keeper of the Cone. It's an honor. The Keeper of the Cone made sure that everybody understood that uh, a respect for Pete was absolutely critical. Keepers, keepers. Cone gets his food first before you guys. JC, Cone gets his food before you guys do. What the real meaning of life is, there are so many people I have to thank because I was very, very difficult for many years, but because people caught up with me, I finally did find myself at a very late age, but I did find myself, and, uh, and I always say better late than never. Water, water, water. There are no selfish motives. His involvement with our team and involvement with the sport is at the purest level. I'm so proud of you guys. I'm so proud to be a member of this team. So proud to be a member of this team. Very proud. Pete is more than one in a billion. Bring it in here, Tate. Let's go. Nice and tight. He brings out the best in everybody that he touches. Everyone talks about how long their truck will last. When we build a truck, we think way down the road. Toyota Tundra has been factory tested to survive years of abuse. That's why day in, day out, to the worst of the elements, in all the rigors of time, nothing stops a Tundra. Toyota, moving forward. Special financing and lease options available now. He was adopted, and because he grew up in a permanent loving home that gave him a sense of his own value, it changed the way he saw the world. Had you asked him, he would have told you it made all the difference. After he founded Wendy's and could give something back, he created an adoption foundation so thousands of kids in foster care could find the kind of permanent loving home he had. You can help make a difference. Support the Dave Thomas Foundation for Adoption. One life at a time. You can change the world. It's time to showcase a pivotal play, mind-blowing move, or a sick stick trick done by you, the viewer. This submission comes from Sussex Tech High School in Georgetown, Delaware. If you have a lacrosse moment captured on video of a sick lacrosse play, a game-defining moment, or a wicked trick, send it to Behind Lacrosse, and maybe you will end up on our show next. We'd love to hear from you, so hit us on our website at BehindLacrosse.com for even more 411 about the fastest sport on two feet covered by the fastest show on TV. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for joining us on Behind Lacrosse. I'm Sheehan Stanwick-Birch, and I'll check you later. Behind Lacrosse, presented by Toyota, moving forward. <laughs> Give me two seconds, I'll be ready. Oh my gosh. Oh, I know, I know that. I just can't stop laughing at your face you just made a second ago. That's a disappointment. Oh. 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 Okay. <laughs> All right.
You're watching Behind the Crawl, fastest game on two feet, covered by the fastest show on TV.